guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers again. Today it's a rainy day in Long Island, and uh, this is a Toro Recycler 22 personal pace. Pete Lombardi gave this to me, and uh, basically he said that the transmission was shot, and uh, basically I think that's it. So when I looked it over a couple of days ago, I noticed that this handle was on backwards, upside down, you know? So this thing didn't go all the way down like that. Well, I just took it off and flipped it up right side up and it seems like it works with the kill, you know? Another thing is when you push this down, it was like no slack, you know? I mean, there was like uh, no tension, you know? Like it wasn't engaging the transmission. So basically I just tightened the cable right here, you know? So now when I push down, it looks like it's pulling and engaging something. I mean, I don't know if the transmission works or not, but Seems to be okay. So uh, this didn't come with a carburetor. Uh, Pete Lombardi took it off before he gave me because he probably needed it for something. So I ordered another one, no big deal. It was only like uh, nine bucks or eight bucks, something like that. Uh, this carburetor is different from a regular Briggs & Stratton uh, push mower carburetor. This one actually has the air vane attachment for the uh, auto choke, right? And so it has a little small attachment where you stick a screw in there and a thing that opens and closes the choke from the air vane. So I have the new carburetor. It's over here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Eight bucks. I'm going to show it to you. This part here has a little choke flap. It's moved by the air vane that's attached to the muffler. When the muffler heats up, it moves it from open, uh, sorry, from closed, and while the engine heats up, it opens. In addition, the air vane also works from the blower, the air in the blower on the flywheel, it pushes the air and pushes the air vane out to give it tension. And this is the throttle hole. This part right over here, is where the air vane connects to. So, good carburetor. Eight bucks. How can you how can you beat eight bucks? Comes with the O ring and a and a gas kit. Anywho, so I'm gonna put this on, and I thought I was just gonna put it on and easy, right? However, I was inspecting the uh, I was inspecting the air vane, and it, it seems a little hinky, like it's not connected to anything, loose. So I took a flashlight and shined it in here, and it appears that this is not connected to the muffler. It has to connect to the muffler for this thing to work properly. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to take this part off, take the engine cover off, and reconnect this air vane to the muffler. Here's a shout out to all my sponsors. I appreciate the stuff that you send me. Really easy to take this top part off. Don't lose the screws. Oh, look at that. This part, this gas tank part is not even connected over there. It needs a, it needs a bolt in there. another one right here holding the dipstick clean this you dipstick lift it up just a little bit give it a twist so it's still on there change impact it's My life has been so much easier with an impact. It's getting carpal tunnel and uh, my wrists and elbow because of uh, because of twisting and turning all this, you know, tendonitis. You guys know what I'm talking about if you wrench like I do. 
And there's the engine cover. Oh, there goes all the bolts. Yeah, I knew I should have taken it off. So here's the air vein right here. Uh huh. Looks like it's on the wrong side. Unless it actually is over here. So wait, let me just think here. So when this heats up, this pushes it. it goes up like that. You know what? It was good. This thing just sits there like that. It was fine. See? This thing moves like that. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna put you closer so you can see. So as you can see the engine cover is off. Here's the cup to the flywheel, the flywheel. Here's the air vein. And it just sits like this here loosely, you know? Basically, this part here has to be in front of this. While the, okay, so the engine's cold now, right? It just stays to where, where it is. This is like this. And right now, just from the spring and where it sits, it keeps the choke closed. When you start the engine, this muffler heats up. I guess they have some type of thermostat mechanism over here, which moves this with the heat by itself, like that, right? And turns this part that opens the choke so that it runs. In addition to that, you can see that this flywheel has these blower fins. When it spins, after you've started the engine, air pushes onto this part here, almost like a sail in a sailboat, and it helps it. It, it blows it from here to like that. And as it does that, it works the same way as this muffler. You following what I'm saying? It's pushing it out that way. When it pushes out that way, this opens the choke. And that's how the auto choke works. It's pretty ingenious, actually, and I love it because who likes primer bulbs? Nobody! I'm gonna put this back now. Sir, we're just gonna leave it the way it is. And while it's here, I'm gonna inspect and make sure everything is copacetic. Just gotta make sure this part here is above that, and in front of that. I think I lost the screw. No editing in this part, guys. This is real time. Just to show you how long it'll take. As long as you got the right tools. Goes on lickety split. Oh, almost forgot, see? The dipstick! Gotta secure the dipstick. Bits. Make sure this is the right one. That's the right one. You don't want to do it too tight. Otherwise, you're going to get it naked. You know, uh, my buddy Pete Lombardi is going to actually come by and uh, pay me a visit. The reason why is because he wants to start his um, YouTube channel again, uh, YouTube channel back up. 
Because, you know, I've been telling that kid for years, you know, you got so much crap in your backyard. You fix stuff. Why don't you just make videos, man, you know? So because he's getting kind of a fan base now from being on in my episode so much, he's going to come over and film me fixing... He's going to film me making a video. How about that? That's kind of interesting, huh? Of course, he's going to use a... Uh, He's going to use an iPad or something to film. I mean, it's, come on, man. The resolution on that thing is crap. i got to find a bolt for this gas tank. There, that nut right there. Okay, now onto the carburetor. Here's the uh, air filter base. Just going to install the uh, gasket. It can only go one way, as you can see. One, two, three little holes for these three little pins, right? If you had it on this way, it wouldn't work. If you had it on this way, it wouldn't work, right? It could only go on one way. That's why they only poke three holes. Because if there was a fourth hole, it would be obvious. Uh, it wouldn't be obvious because this is obvious. Maybe obvious, but holes don't really fit. Well, all right. I can't wait for that uh, Pete Lombardi guy to show up. It's just going to be done by the time he gets here. So here's the linkage. This goes into here. Z-bend, right? Of course, the uh, copies don't really fit that well. Actually, that one's okay. Attach the uh, fuel line. Line it up. I had to find bolts for this thing. I didn't have bolts. But I got a lot of bolts. It's just uh, takes time looking for them. You know what I mean? This auto choke air vane thing pops in here. And this thing is tightened down. And then you torque them down with a not an impact but socket. There you go. That's perfect, guys. See? So you see the spring holds the choke closed. Get you closer spring keeps the choke closed when you start the engine air will blow this right and slowly open the choke while you're running as the temperature from the muffler builds up it also helps it to ensure that it opens up completely pretty cool Tighten the clamp on the fuel line. Now, I've already drained the fuel from this gas tank. It didn't have a cap, so I had to find one. It's not the exact cap for this, but it fits. And by the way, these are those Briggs caps where almost every one that I get, people try to screw them on too tight, and this top pops off and breaks. So I've got this one taped, but it works. So this is the breather hose that goes onto the base. This seems to work good. Well, sorry. I'm going to tighten this. Next comes this. The holes are too small, so I just use my fingernail and just push it down. So now it's being held there. This part here goes just like that. See? 
and then line up the two carburetor holes and then there's one to hold it onto the frame so it's supposed to look like that of course I don't have any screws for that so I have to go look for some if it didn't come with screws then how do you know what kind of screw it is Henry well trust me if you've done enough of these things you kind of just know when you look at them Oh, that's the one I need. It's a uh, five sixteenths. That's good enough. All right. So looky here, man. All we have is this uh, thing to do. Moved it outside. The sun's out. And so now I'm going to uh, secure that top engine cowling and it's just basically two screws KK so I don't have any of the original type screws because I'm not really a carpenter but uh, These screws are basically just to hold the uh, thing on there. So. Some wood screws will just hold this on there. All you need it's just a you know light little cover here you know so uh, I'm gonna put some gas in here some gasage and we're gonna rock on y'all be here and see me start it for the first time enough just to get it started. Besides, I don't have any more gas in here anyway. Alright, let's check the Earl. Put this cap back on. These kind, you don't want to tighten them too tight, otherwise the things just pop right, right off. It sucks. I checked this the other day and it was crystal clear. It could use a little bit of a a little more, but crystal clear. Just zoomed out. What do you guys think? Will it start? Really, no reason why it shouldn't start. It's got gas. Check the oil. Don't know if it has spark. Not sure. Here we go.
Yeah, so I think the gears are all screwed up in the transmission. That's probably why they gave it to Pete. And it is burning quite a little bit of oil there. I mean, it could be just, uh, you know, hydro-locked and it just has to burn off. I'm going to let it run for a little bit and see if it uh, cleans up. But the engine seems to run pretty smooth, though. But that is quite a lot of smoke. At least it's... It doesn't seem like it's dissipating that... Uh-oh. That does, that's not good. Check that out. It was all right. My clamp just fell off. I was worried. It looked like it seized or something. But uh, I'm going to let it run for a little bit. See if the smoke clears up. And then I guess I'll look underneath and uh, see if I can check out the transmission situation. But the engine runs smooth, though. been running for about two minutes now. As you can see, the smoke has dissipated and it stopped smoking. So it burned off all the oil that was in the uh, muffler. So, uh, you know, it's a good engine, good mower, it's in good shape. You can still see the, uh, you can still hear the, the gears. I'm going to take the bag off. Flip it on its side and check out the transmission. And I see that it works well. At least I can do is put the air cleaner on. Three little slots. Wiped off some of the Earl. Gotta clean your shit. Now when I turn this on its side, I'm gonna turn it on the side of the carburetor, not the muffler, otherwise you'll have uh, you'll have that oil go into the muffler again, you know. Take it off your bag. back over the gas cap. This gas cap, dance cap sucks. Still dripping some, but uh, put this there so it's not completely to the side. Okay, so now you got a view of the gearbox. Four three-eighths bolts holding the cover to the gearbox. How much you guys want to bet? The worm gear is stripped. Haha! -ha. That cover just came off, no problem. Yeah, how the hell am I supposed to get this out of here? You know what I'm saying? How do I get this out of here? I'm gonna remove the whole axle to get to that? It's preposterous. You know, looks all right. Gears don't look stripped, man. What's up with that? 
Let me get a flashlight. You know, it's not stripped. Looks okay. I don't get it. Maybe it was the... No, I'm looking at the belts. The belt is on there. Actually, is it maybe off the pulley. There's the belt. Maybe there's the wiring. I'm going to put this back, guys, because it looks good. I mean, there's no grease. I'm going to find some grease. And I just slopped grease all over there. And I don't think it matters which side it goes on. Because it looks equidistant in terms of shape and size. Well, um, the gearbox looks good, you know, to me. You guys will let me know if you think otherwise, but I think it might just be the the um, the linkage, the cable. start before because the uh, air filter was full of oil. A new one. adjusted the uh, spring RPMs are kind of low so now I just uh, seems a little high now So, got the carburetor on there, got it started up, runs pretty well, uh, got rid of all the smoke in the muffler because it was hydrolocked, and um, seems to run well. The only thing wrong with it is the transmission. I, we looked at the gears and it looked like they were not rubbed out. I think it's just that they're not touching, you know, like it's missing some kind of washer on the gearbox that allows that top worm gear to um, get to the cog, you know? It seems like they're not touching. They're not even rubbing against each other, you know? So, to do that, I'd have to take apart the entire, I'd take, have to take two, both rear wheels off, those two black brackets on the side there, right? And remove the entire axle with the gearbox. Disconnect the linkage to it, the pulley, the belt from the pulley. It's a lot of work, you know what I mean? But, rear propulsion on a personal pace is part of the feature of why it's, you know, an expensive mower, you know? So, other than, other than that, it's good, I mean, it's a push mower, I guess, you know? But, uh, it's a shame to not be able to get that gearbox to work, you know? And I know it's going to drive me crazy and bother me, so I'll probably end up doing it. We've got Pete Lombardi and his pop over here, checking out my horde. He wanted to see the DYT 4000 working. Sounds good. Put the PTO on. So 
it took some doing. Uh, I figured out that uh, the bearing in here is busted, which causes it to move around loosely like this. See? Right? So the new you got to attach a new bearing and then press it. So with a special tool which I don't have. In addition, the person who worked on this last knew that. And so they also took away the gears and the washers and the E-clip and all the stuff that comes with it. So this is now free flowing and nice and loose. So I removed the cable that attaches to the drive driven uh, transmission, right? Keep that cable. And this is just loose. See? Now it's a push mower. Three wheels in the back. Took the gear, took the transmission gearbox out. Doesn't have any gears on it. Took the cable out. And to prevent this from, you know, the, the tendency is to just grab this and push down as you go forward. So for it to be loose like this is a little, you know, janky. So I'm going to zip tie this part here so he can't, whoever gets it doesn't push down on it, you know. And now I'm going to sell this push mower for like uh, 100 bucks. That was today's fix. Removing the uh, gearbox because of a bad transmission. Uh, putting a carburetor on there. That's it, actually. I mean, other than the fact that I had to check the uh, if the air vein was connected, you know. But uh, so that actually took me quite a long time, too, you know. Something so simple that you think would be lickety-split. Of course, I did get a visit from Pete Lombardi. Anyway, see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey guys, support my channel. Buy a sticker. Got the bumper sticker, too. Thanks for watching, guys. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Follow my Instagram, at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website at 